Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is when you're watching this video. Today's topic, the truth about vibe coding. I'm gonna drop the truth bomb today. There's been a lot of hype in recent months about vibe coding tools like Cursor, Windsurf, Bolt, Replit, many others. And while I think the hype is not necessarily overblown, because these tools are very, very powerful, there are some caveats. One of the biggest is that I think there's this part of the hype, right? Like on X and other platforms is that there's this kind of like, oh my gosh, I just one shot, just asked it to build this app and it made this app for me. Here's a screenshot or a video of it doing it, right? And it's like, yeah, okay. It created a UI for you um, that looks nice, but there's not a functional app in most cases. A functioning app has a lot of components. There's authentication, there's a database, there's storage, there's transactional emails. So there's all these other components that make an app work. Sometimes you have to interact with other APIs. Um, so it's not just as simple as one shot and the app is totally done. Some cases that, that could happen, right? It just depends. Like if the app is relatively simple, doesn't require any kind of complex um, tasks or uh, functions or database um, engagements or queries or storing anything to a table. But in most cases, that is not the case. In most cases, you need a, waving at the neighbor, uh, in most cases, you need more than just one shot, right? So understanding the architecture of websites and applications is kind of essential at this point. Now, are we eventually going to get the full stack agent that develops out entire web apps and websites for you? Yes, we are. Oh, we are. And it's kind of like there's experiments in that already. There's definitely some startups and somebody's going to drop a comment that's like, oh, but this app does everything for you. So that's how quickly things move, right? But I do think if you want to get into vibe coding or if you just want to start using tools like Cursor and Windsurf, it is very, very helpful to have some knowledge about how websites and apps are structured and um, some of that, just that, yeah, that foundational knowledge is very, very helpful. Now I will say, I came from a background of light web design and development, and uh, like 15 years ago, we were building mobile websites because at the time, we had an agency, my partner and I, and we had 12 designers and developers on our, our team and we were making mobile websites for clients. These were separate websites from their main website that would be served to mobile devices. And there was this big debate at the time, like are we gonna do responsive sites or are we gonna do separate mobile sites? So we were kind of teetering on the edge of both, right? But my point is that we were using a lot of existing platforms and frameworks to do all that, WordPress, things like that. And so I, I learned how to do HTML, CSS, some light JavaScript, some PHP, but not much, okay? Um, and then to, just to put it into perspective, in the past six months, I've coded up a handful, four now, um, well, the fourth is in progress, but three full apps in React a language that I have always wanted to learn how to build apps in, but have never taken the time to really invest and learn. So I started using Cursor and I started building apps with, uh, in React. And 
this really funny thing happened. I started to learn how React works, how a React application is structured by learning from the AI as it built out the app for me and communicating with the AI, telling it what I want. And this is again where like, you know, vibe coding is, uh, it's very dependent on how well you can explain and describe what you're wanting to accomplish to the LLM, right? To the, the AI. And so again, having the knowledge of kind of the architecture, the lingo uh, for web development and app development is very helpful because you can speak the language, right? You can tell the application kind of what, or the uh, AI, what you're really trying to accomplish. And so it's, it's very helpful to know the basic lingo. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted by just all the cars driving by right now. It's like peak morning commute time, I think. Um, but anyway, the, uh, yeah, so it's very helpful to know the lingo so that you can speak to the AI and really get a better result, right? So, you know, go and learn about things like Supabase, right? I love open source stuff. So learn about Supabase. Supabase is great for user authentication and tables and uh, storage. Um, so if you want to get into Vibe coding, I'd look at Supabase. You know, check out Next.js. There's been some controversy recently about Next.js. Some people really hate it. Some people love it. Um, but either way, it's an interesting framework for creating React apps. Um, but I'm not a big fan of Vercel, which a lot of people are use. If your app starts to get traction and stuff, Vercel can get really expensive really quickly. And there's a bunch of limitations that really you'll start running into walls, Vercel walls, um, as you start to develop certain applications. So I'm a big fan of hosting on your own servers. You can use something like Coolify to, um, Coolify is kind of like an open source version of Vercel, just without a bunch of the, the cucky limits <laughs> that Vercel has. Um, so yeah, check those resources out. I'd say those are good places to start. You know, um, transactional emails, I love Postmark. Uh, I really like Brevo. Resend is okay. Um, so yeah, so it's like, again, you know, an application is built out of a bunch of different pieces, right? There is the HTML and the CSS to, sh you know, do the styling of everything and to create the user interface. Um, but then there's the whole rest of the application in the back background that's doing functions, and um, if you're building a React app, you're using components. So again, like I, if I were starting at zero, if I didn't know anything about coding, my best advice would be to invest some time and effort in learning the architecture of applications and the basic frameworks and just get to know that a little bit, take some notes, chart it out, have AI even help you learn. Um, and then just jump in, right? And you're gonna, it's gonna be messy, it's gonna get frustrating sometimes, but I am telling you, these applications, the hype is real because like I said, I've been developing now full on applications using Cursor uh, in the past six months and it's been so fun. I'm getting like major dopamine high from it every day. And yeah, I run into frustrating things and I have to sometimes kind of actually do some debugging myself or at least kind of a little investigation and figuring out what's really going on and or really kind of like having to wrangle the AI um, and, and really get it to step back and look at the bigger picture to solve problems. But it's been a lot of fun to build with Cursor. I literally feel like there's nothing I can't build. And it's like an overwhelming feeling when you're like, okay, now I can build any app. What do I want to build? Um, so then you just got to go out and find problems to solve, right? Um, but I'm very lucky and fortunate that I have some amazing clients and a great partner 
that um, I'm working with on a daily basis. And we're getting to do really fun, innovative things using AI um, across the board. And I'll talk more about that in a different video, just kind of the specific things that we're doing and working on. But um, yeah, that's, that's really mostly what I wanted to say about vibe coding. You know, the hype is real, but there are caveats. And it's not just as simple as one shot. You do one prompt and the whole app is done most of the time. Um, you know, I have one-shotted some little tools, right? Like I've one-shotted some Python tools. I one-shotted a bulk SMS sender that was built in just HTML and JavaScript. <laughs> I'm pretty sure actually it might have been just HTML. It's like literally an index.html file that I just open up and it's got the inputs and it's connected to the Twilio API. So you can have a lot of fun. You can build little tools. You can build little apps. Uh, it, it is, it's vibey. It's vibey. Cringe. I'm cringing right now. Anyway, that's my thoughts for today. I hope you have an excellent, excellent day. We live in a permissionless economy now. You don't need permission from anybody to do anything, to build what you want. So get out there, find some problems to solve, apply yourself, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.